Hello, my name is Vic and welcome back to another game tutorial. In this video, we're going to round out our chair example. So if you've missed that series, you can click on the link in the description above. Basically, what we did was we took a chair, we removed the background, we replaced it with a picture. And now finally, we're going to make it a little bit more photorealistic by adding a simple shadow. So if you missed the first two tutorials, just click on the link above to check it out. In this tutorial, we're using GIMP 2.10.24, which is the most current version at the time of recording this tutorial. So let's start by bringing in our transparent image. So we've got our chair image over here, which we've been working on. And if you want to download the file and follow along, I've linked in the description below where to download. So we wanted to create a photorealistic scene with this chair in a with a background, right? So I've already selected the image for the background that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to drag it into GIMP over here and convert it. And it's going to bring it in as a layer. So GIMP is layer based. So you just make sure that you put whatever layer that you want to see above the other layers that should be below it. In this case, the background should be behind. And for now, I'm going to turn off the chair layer here and click on the background layer because we're going to be working on this. Now, this is just a very simplistic example. So I know that there's a lot of people out there who do a much better job. But in case you're just starting out and you want a simple example, a simple explanation, hopefully this will get you started. So we've got our layer selected over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the transform tool. So I'm going to hold the right click, the left click button, I'm sorry, and select scale. Or alternatively, you can press control shift S on your keyboard, and then select the image that you want or the layer in this case. Now it's going to give us these handles. And what we can do now is we can scale this and I'm just going to scale this about a little bit above the size of our canvas. And you can move wherever using the middle handle over here. And it'll scale it proportionally because I've locked it, which is what you want to do because you don't want your image to look all skewed. So let's say I'm just going to put it over there, click on scale or press enter, and it's going to scale our layer. And that's looking great. So let's go back to our chair layer over here and let's turn this back on and we've got our chair layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing to our chair layer. I'm going to scale this. So I'm using the keyboard this time, shift S. It's going to give us those same handles and I can scale my chair to about the size that is sort of realistic, right? I don't know. You could argue with me whether or not this is realistic, but this is just an example. So don't be too hard on me. All right. I think I like it like that. Press enter. And that looks, that looks pretty good, but we need a little bit more convincing because we need some sort of a shadow. So as you can see here, the light is coming from above. Let me just move this chair a little bit here so that the light is almost coming directly from above it. So it will cast a shadow somewhere down here. And I'll show you a really easy way to do that. So what I like to do is I always like to add a new layer. I'm going to call this new layer shadow. And I'm just going to make it a transparent layer. So just fill it with transparency. Click OK. And let me move that down below the chair because I want the shadow to be underneath the chair. Make sure you click on your shadow layer and we're going to be using our paths tool or B. Now we've used this before in the previous tutorial on how to cut out the background. So this is a different way of using the paths tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a path around the legs of the chair and I'm going to close it off pressing, holding down the control key and pressing this first node over here. And it's going to close that into polygon. Now what I'm going to do is go to select from path. It's going to make a selection based on that path. So we've got a nice trapezoid or 
polygon, what, what have you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select and feather this. Now, I've done this example before, but depending on what you're going for, you might have to play around a little bit. So I'm going to feather it by 50 pixels. Click OK. And you'll see here in a second what it does. So it didn't look like it did anything. It looked like it just rounded the edges. That's OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the bucket fill tool and I'm going to fill this area. Now it's going to look really ugly, but you see what I mean with the feathering. So it's kind of created that gradient that we want. So the next step of the magic is let's just click on the shadow layer and we've got the opacity here and we can adjust the opacity of that layer. So obviously this is up to you to play around with. Let's say around 54 looks pretty good. It kind of matches this little lamp shadow over here in darkness. So I think I'm happy with that. Let's zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to make a selection disappear, select none, so we can see our image. It looks kind of convincing a little bit more, but it looks a little bit funny because I want the shadow to kind of extend a little bit. So what we can do again is we can scale this. So click on the shadow layer. We can scale. And in this case, our layer includes the transparency in the back. So if we turn these off, this is what our layer looks like. So just keep that in mind. So let's increase it in size a little bit. Again, this is totally up to you. Use your artistic freedom with however you want to do this. Let me zoom back in. It kind of looks OK. Let me bleed it out a little bit more, extend it out a little bit more. And I think that'll do it like that. Click Scale. That looks all right to me. So let's go ahead and export this into an image and check out the final result. Export as. Let's do chair scene dot JPG. So this is going to be a JPEG file export. You can just keep it at the default settings. If you want to increase the quality, you can go ahead and increase that to 100%. Exported. Let's check out our final result. So this isn't too bad for our final result. Go ahead and check out the before and after pictures over here. And that's pretty cool, right? With just a simple method, simple tools, nothing too fancy. You create something kind of convincing. Well, that's it. I hope you learned something today. And the best way to support the channel is just to like the video and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.